Um, the level of difficulty for the Kanko test, I will rate moderate because um, I, will, I was prepared well for the Common Core on Regents. I didn't really have to like stress over it, even though I still had stress in the background because it's a test that you need in order to pass high school. The level of difficulty for the Common Core would be severe because um, it, would, it was harder than I expected to be. And then like it would, they would change all the questions to make it harder and confuse you so you get it wrong. And I believe like I wasn't prepared to take the test because they would change the curriculum in the middle of the year. So like you only get half of the year to prepare. <laughs> We was learning on uh, stuff about college level courses in English, and but and, but he had to stop all that in order to teach us for the Common Core test, which was like a different curriculum and like it's a way. In order to pass the test, you need to learn it. So now, he, so he had to stop all his lessons in order to teach us how to pass the test. I observed that like the teachers were more strict and more forced with how they teach, and they will be more pressured and force you to like do more work than you're supposed to. And the attitude, I saw that he felt that the Common Core was a nuisance because he had to stop all his lessons and he had to teach us for a test which was basically messing up his, his um, teaching for the year. So I would say that he probably hated the Common Core test. <laughs> I felt pressure like a normal regent because the test you need to pass. But overall, I felt good because my teacher, he was, he's a very intelligent person. He taught us well. And but even though I didn't feel pressure, other students felt pressure because not everybody has the same teacher and taught the same way. So Common Core had pressure on everybody mostly. I felt a lot of pressure to pass the test because if I did bad on the test, I would make the teacher look bad because the teacher are graded on how the students do. And if I did bad, that would make me feel bad. Yes, is the new Common Core State Standards a big mistake? That's the question we're tackling today on this show. I'm your host, Notion Chaudhary, and joining me is high school teacher Stephen Rounds. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Now, before we get into all the controversy surrounding the Common Core, let's bring some of our viewers up to speed. What is the Common Core? The Common Core are a set of standards which are uh, um, levels of proficiency that students should reach at various times throughout their 12 years through, uh, through school into college. Um, they were brought about because of a deficiency that entry-level employees in companies and corporations um, and, uh, were experiencing and deficiencies in freshman um, classes in colleges around the country. So both uh, college presidents and business owners basically appealed to our political system and the education system to bring up, uh, bring the, the, the level of learning to a more advanced level. Um, and so this prompted a mad rush of people to research what was going on in more successful countries around the world and based on the, and, and in also successful states. Um, and to find out what made those programs in those countries and those states successful and they implemented them throughout the or, or beginning to implement them throughout the uh, United States um, educational system. I'm sure that you're friends with other teachers. What's the general consensus among, amongst the <laughs> teachers about the Common Core? <laughs> As I said uh, before, um, Hayes was at the forefront of, of mm -hmm. this. I mean we, we attended conferences and at first unfortunately um, it was you get the sense that it was a lot of textbook companies, you know, because we can't dissever, we can't take away from this that there is a huge money grab out there. When we, when we implement a new paradigm in education, that means hundreds of thousands, millions of textbooks have to be taken out and replaced or modified. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of money. So a lot of these um, early uh, conferences we were going to were just textbook salesmen. Um, but as the teachers that were active in the process started learning more and more and more about Common Core, um, 
I, there, there were times where I would go to a conference and some lady would you know, be trying to tell, you know, Pearson or, or Houghton Mifflin would be trying to sell us a book. The other teachers would be crowded around me or one of my colleagues asking us, well, what do you know? What do you know? What have you seen? Um, so our co my colleagues, we were really, we, we, again, we wanted to jump on it with both feet. We wanted to be at the forefront. We wanted to maximize results as soon as possible, get rid of the growing pains as much as possible. And there's no use fighting it. If, if, this, if the country is, is adopting it, complaining isn't going to do anything about it. Um, and in many ways, you know, teachers are often like students that we, you know, teachers complain just as much as students do. Um, right. I remember yes. being at one, at one conference and there was a sonnet, a Shakespearean sonnet, and, uh, you know, the complexity of the text came, came into, came into play. Oh, my students couldn't, oh, there's no way they could, they could understand what this is about. And, you know, after my rebuttal, as an experiment, when I came back to my school, I was teaching and I, a random student walked by my uh, classroom. I was talking to my students about Common Core. I said, watch this. And I called the kid in out of the hall. He thought he was getting in trouble. I called him in. I showed him. I didn't even have him read it. I just showed him. This is a poem, a sonnet by William Shakespeare. What is it about? It's about love. Without even reading it. So teachers like to complain about that my students wouldn't be able to get that. But without even reading it, they understand it's about love. Mm -hmm. So a lot of students, a lot of the teachers um, want to be critical, want to be negative, want to complain, rather than taking all that energy and figuring out what Common Core is all about. Um, I was lucky enough to be in a supportive environment. But a lot of schools aren't. You know, that means that that's hours out of my life that I wasn't getting paid for, but at home or on my breaks or over the summer, you know, wading through websites and um, looking at, at, at information outside of what we were being given at the conferences and fi figuring out what it really is. Are teachers willing to do that? That's, that's going to be on them, unfortunately. Right. Most recently, this made headlines of the New York Post. There are some holes in the article, but it suggests that the pressure of the exam was a contributing factor to this principal, principal's decision to commit suicide. Mm. Is this an extreme case, or are teachers feeling severely p pressured to live up to these standards? No, you know, you know, I do understand, you know, one of the things I try to teach my students is empathy, to try to understand different points of view. And I know principals are under a lot, a lot of stress they get it from parents and from their, you know, superintendent and administration and, and the teachers in their building. Um, and it's part of the chaos that's, and I hadn't heard that story, it's part of the chaos of implementing something new. No, that's not a great, obviously a great coping mechanism. If you're in education, I've been in education as a teacher for nine years, and then before that, um, my degree, and then before that, as a high school student, the regions, New York State Regents has changed three times since then. Um, if, if, if parents want, if you graduated from a New York school, you can go on the website and look at the regions you took whenever you took it. And I think it goes back to even like 1959. And you can look, and it, the only thing that remains the same is change. Um, you know, you have to be prepared for that. As we develop best practices and new ideas and philosophies regarding education, you know, this person obviously had other things most likely happening in, their li in, in his or her life, but you have to be ready for change and you have to embrace it. Look for, look for the positive. So were you ever personally like stressed out about the Common Core? Oh yeah, yeah. Really? Oh, well, about the Common Core, about the testing. About the testing, like preparing your students for the testing. Um, no, because again, with English, I believe that the skills that are being assessed are are the appropriate skills to be assessed. They need to be functional in those in those compartments to be functional at school or in an entry level position. Um, I always have anxiety just because my kids are taking a test anyway. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm like pacing, you know, outside in the hallway, just, oh, they're going to have problems on this one just because yeah. it's poorly worded or, um, but not because of the common core. I'd be stressed out if it was, you know, just any, just test. any test. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and you have to be confident that, that you're, you're, in my case, my guys, I taught at an old boys school, but you have to be confident that your students, that you imparted the proper skill set. Now, if you weren't doing your job all year and you didn't impart that proper school skill set, um, then yeah, you should be stressed, but maybe you're not in the right position or you're not in the right, uh, you're not in the right field, uh, a professional field anyway. Okay. So do you think there will be more cases of cheating on mm -hmm. an administrative level? Yeah. And I, <laughs> do I think there'll be more cases of cheating? Uh, that's a tough question. You have to break, think about cheating. Are you talking about, you know, 
there are cases, uh, you know, if you read Freakonomics, it's an excellent, uh, it's a great book. Um, there's a, a chapter in it about um, grade, um, paying for grades for teachers. So as a, as a motivation um, for teachers, they'd pay you if you did well, uh, mm -hmm. if your students did well on standardized tests. And so um, they uh, show that they broke, broke down into three different types of cheating. Um, what do you consider cheating? Uh, let's say if a student, um, he finished the test ends and he's got five questions at the end or she has five questions at the end and you go up you don't know the answers but you just just fill a just just fill five things and just fill it in oh i didn't see that. i didn't even and the kid didn't legitimately honestly didn't know he missed those five questions is that cheating or what if the student hands in the test now you have it and you say oh the student missed five blanks and you're not even looking at the test you're just i want him to have a 20 percent chance mm -hmm. versus so that's the second type of cheating or a third type of cheating, you actively go in and change answers. And so the researchers, um, you know, what they did was eventually the next year they had the same kids come back and give them basically the same test. And they saw, wow, somehow you got a 90 last June, but two months later you're getting a 60. Um, paying for grades is, is a terrible idea. It's, uh, again, if you're building assessment, if you're assessing a teacher based on the results, that's fine, but it should only be one piece of a larger sphere. That should be one component of a teacher. Um, another example, if you're a heart surgeon, and you know, you've, you've, this is the one that has the, the most trite example here. You're a heart surgeon, um, and you're excellent, so you're automatically, you're gonna be enlisted for the most difficult cases on the planet. You're the specialist, you're the best heart surgeon in the country. You're gonna be brought into the toughest cases. So your, your mortality is gonna, your, your patients are gonna be dying more frequently, but not because you're a bad heart surgeon, but because you're just in more difficult cases. So is that a bad heart surgeon? Because you know, nobody could go in and do that job. Yeah. So this is the situation that we're finding uh, in some of our public schools specifically around the country is that you have amazing educators in a tough spot. So therefore, again, assessment is, assessing a teacher based on their assessments should just be one piece of the puzzle. And should you be stressed? Yes, if you're not stressed, you're not doing your job. But it is, it's only one piece. Yeah, yeah. About how much, like by percentage? Again, it would be on a continuum between, um, again, just going back to that example of, of a high school senior applying to college, similar. Right. Um, okay. You know, your experience, your um, your observations you have it is, as, as a teacher. I have an administrator, principal, assistant principal, superintendent coming into my room a few times a year like this, you know, writing down. Mm -hmm, right, I've mm -hmm, seen that before. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. that's how you know if, you're, if your students like you or not is, you know, they're quiet when the administrator's there. <laughs> if the kids are off the wall and you're getting observed, they don't like you very much. Um, yeah, th that uh, again. Your 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 how you're testing um, your contribution to sports. If you're a coach or uh, you know um, you're helping out in other ways, um, are you on any committees? Are you on grading committees or assessment committees? Um, attendance, obviously, just like with a student. I mean, if you're a teacher and you're gone 25 days out of the year, uh, so th it's just one one factor. Um, does it weigh more than the rest? Probably, um, but again, it's not going to make or break you at least at first. And in most districts, rather than just outright firing you, um, you'll be given help. You'll, you'll say, you know, you're going to work with this um, assistant principal of curriculum management, or you're going to work with this assessment director. You're going to work, we, we, have, we have resources for you. Because you're a good teacher. You know, the kids like you. Um, your, your, your lesson plans are always on point. You're detailed. Um, but you're having a little bit of trouble giving them the skill set they need to be successful. How about you work with this person? Now, if that doesn't work, then then there's probably some other issues. And another thing the gentleman said in the beginning was that the tests were hard. Parents are also complaining that, about the level of difficulty. In one article, it wrote, parents are ang angry about the Common Core because it has taken from them their ability to help their children in school. Mm -hmm. So we'll pull um, some middle school test questions that stumped some high schoolers.
So what do you think? Are the questions too hard? Um, all right, there's, there's a couple ways to approach this. Uh, again, coming from my experience with the English Common Core, what you need to do and what, what I did systematically with my students and what every teacher should do is put the rubric on the board, on whatever place that all your students can see it, hand it out. What is being assessed? What is worth the most points? So for example, what I call the meta test. The meta test is the test that there is a test that the, the test is measuring that isn't really on the page. So for example, um, the English Regents is split up into three parts. The first part is multiple choice, the second part is a, doc, a DBQ for lack of a better term, and the third part is a, uh, um, uh, an, an analysis of rhetorical literary devices in a short piece of uh, usually a speech or a letter or, or uh, excerpt of a short story or novel. Anyway, they start them with the, with the multiple choice. So your first inclination as a student is to say, oh, let me just get through these first. Mm -hmm. The multiple choice in the grand scheme of things are worth less than the rest of the exam. On, on a cosmic level. If you do well on the two essays, you can fail the multiple choice and still have a good shot. Thanks, and a couple of our students found that out this last year. But um, So the meta test is start with task two. Task two is worth more points. You can, if you annihilate task two and task three, you don't have to have a shred of stress about task, uh, task um, excuse me, uh, the first task. So my, my uh, um, suggestion would be Yes, it's skills, but one of the skills is test taking. Um, understand what the test what the test is really asking you. Um, I think they got their cue from that a little bit from College Board, where the SAT is like this mind game. You mm -hmm. know, don't answer a question and it's mystery points. And oh, but if you get one wrong, then we take it off. Or or, or even the AP exams, AP languages specifically, is um, you know if you look at the breakdown of how many multiple choice questions you can get wrong and still get a three or a four, it's it's incredible and a lot of students don't know that. So be comfortable with the test and that means your teacher has to be on their game and they need to know what the test looks like. Right. Now again in terms of the way the questions are worded that's just going to be again part of the, those growing pains of you know if you're in second grade coming up through the system you're going to be more comfortable by the time you're in eighth grade. If you're in eighth grade and this is the first time you're getting it it's going to look like it's coming out of left field. Mm -hmm. So again, I do get that stress, but my suggestion would be be comfortable with the test. Learn about the test. Here's what Louis C.K. had to say about the Common Core. There's stuff that goes on with education that gets me upset. You even tweet about, about math yeah, problems, yeah. <coughs> for instance. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the Common Core. The, it's more the standardized tests. The tweets I wrote about the, the standardized tests were from a parent's point of view. These are my little feelings, you know? I don't believe that they should matter any, to anybody else. But I've got three million Twitter followers, so, you know. <laughs> Those math problems are daunting. Those math problems. Yeah, they don't make any They're not, education should be welcoming. It should be something where they're trying to, you know, a good teacher gets your kid excited about reasoning and algebra and this kind of stuff. They get them excited and they pull them in. But the way these tests are written, which rule the whole education system now, because all, every year they're, they're pounded with preparation for these tests. So there's not even time to think about anything else. And these questions and the way that they're written repel kids from that kind of reasoning. It does the opposite of what it's meant to do. That's my opinion. It's boring. <laughs> Sorry. All right. What are your thoughts on what he said? Uh, besides being hilarious, um, you know, comedy, the purpose of comedy in the, in the public discourse is, especially satire, is to expose a problem in order to work to fix it. So, you know, while I advocate and I say that there are some more positive elements of Common Core, um, especially with ELA and, and, and literacy, um, again, I do understand that there uh, will be some stress associated with the growing pains and the evolution of assessment. Um, and I think Louis C.K. is just is pointing that out in, in sort of an absurdist, um, in, in a funny way. Um, yeah, and one of the criticisms is the testing is, is insane. It's off the wall. Um, you know, uh, one of the assessments um, I saw, there was a picture. Uh, it's, it was for second graders. And the picture was of a man um, the, the point of the assessment was you, the person in the picture is doing something, you write the verb that he's doing, right? So he's mowing a lawn. He's just behind a, a lawn mower and he's on some grass. And the teachers in her school were thinking, you know, we teach second grade in Harlem. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of our students have seen somebody mowing a lawn. You know, their, their experience with grass is the five by five foot square of it outside their building where the one tree on their block grows out of. You know. 
so these are questions and the modes of assessment, and the types of questions that it's an evolution that, um, you know, using humor as a, as a tactic to, uh, um, to draw attention to that in the public discussion is important. And I think it gets a lot of people involved and that's a good thing.